One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. The link is in the description. All right, enjoy the video. What's up guys, it's Terry Haas here and today I'm just going to be kind of going over uh, two trades that I made this week that I really think can can help a lot by by kind of seeing my thought process and how I approach them and why I did. Already I know this stock is overextended because we're at the top of the range, um, you know, I'm seeing that, you know, we're, we're pretty far from VWAP, um, you know, just off these kind of three, I can already tell right now, like this, this, this example, right up here, we're already too high. Um, so I'm going to be kind of looking, uh, for lines. So for my lines, I think I'd probably be watching this one at the top and this one at the bottom and just seeing kind of whether they hold or not. If you want to do kind of like a fantasy in here and a fi fantasy in there, I don't really think like that's a bad idea either because I've been getting a lot of questions and people are like, oh man, like I, I had that line drawn, but I just, I, I just couldn't take it. And I think if you're having that problem, what you need to do in order to trust your lines is just start using small size preset orders and see if you can get kind of consistent doing that because that can help you as well. But if you're going to do preset orders, you need to do preset exits, I think, because what's happening to people is that they have really great entries, but then they don't end up getting paid for them because they hold too long hoping for a home run. They hope that it can go further. And by the time it kind of uh, you know, by the time they're like, oh man, I should have sold, they're already for a loss and being stopped out. So I think that if you're having a problem with greed, preset exits are going to be the way to go. Um, and so when I'm looking at this chart, I'm saying, okay, you know, we have VWAP down here. VWAP's always going to be a line. We have this one right here. But when these two kind of line up, I like it a lot more because we have all the VWAP buyers, plus we have all the people buying on this kind of support area that works super, super well. We have kind of two types of people wanting to buy. And also, it's not really overextended. It's come down enough for, for kind of a bounce. So this is kind of a play that I would love to kind of get involved in. Um, if I kind of see this area holding, if I kind of see this action, um, maybe if I'm a bit newer, I'm just going to preset at this area, put in my stop loss and say, okay, this was my plan. I'm going to follow through with it. Um, so I think like this kind of uh, mentality of, okay, I want to buy a pullback. I don't want to be chasing strength. I don't want to be FOMOing in at the highs. You know, if, if you're seeing this stock here, because most people are seeing the stock at the highs, I think, in my opinion, because like, let's say you miss something by the time, um, you know, in our chat, I think we're a little bit quicker, but you know, maybe you're not looking at the chat. Maybe you're paying attention to another ticker. By the time you see this stock all the way at the highs, you know, it's a little bit too late. Start kind of planning for a bounce. Start kind of thinking in your head, okay, I don't want to buy strength. I want to be looking for a pullback. I want to be looking for some type of weakness to go long into. Even if it's only a small bounce and even half this, it's still way better than chasing at the highs and then getting stopped out. So again, these are some housekeeping rules that I posted in after hours. I know that some people don't read the after hours chat on the weekend. Some people are a bit busy with other stuff. Some people can't make it to weekend mentoring. So I decided to include some of this in a video as well. Um, so number one is in a trade, if I want to buy 350, let's say that this right here is 350 line, okay? If I want to buy 350 and 350 doesn't bounce in the next minute or so, I'm going to always get out for break even or a small loss. If this let's say this doesn't bounce and it just kind of lingers and lingers and lingers. Well, that wasn't my plan. My plan was for a bounce, um, you know, off VWAP, off this kind of support area to go higher. You know, if that doesn't happen in a minute or so, I'm out. I'm just going to cancel the trade and uh, either get out break even, small win or small loss. And that's just going to be it because my plan is for it to kind of come down, bounce and go higher. You know, I don't want it to be lingering. I don't want it to be sitting there on VWAP for five minutes saying, oh, is it going to bounce? Is it going to not? Because then it starts to turn into like a 50-50 trade and you start kind of fighting yourself saying, oh, but what if it goes higher? And then the other side of you is like, oh, but what if it goes lower? You know, I, I should sell now, but I don't want to be missing out on something. It's always good just to take it off, reevaluate, reassess. And uh, for me, that's always kind of the best thing for me to do. Um, I never buy into a green candle. I never buy into any type of strength. And the reason being is right here. You know, let's say I'm buying up here. You know, 
when it's super strong into some type of maybe pre-market resistance or daily resistance, you know, that's not going to work for me. Um, I need to always be buying into support. I need to always be buying into weakness because I really do think, you know, if you're an experienced long like Austin, Austin is a really, really good strength buyer. I see it all the time in Austin's webinars, but he, he doesn't just buy into strength randomly. You know, there's a difference in what he does. Uh, maybe he's buying the second VWAP test when he knows that shorts are really in trouble. Or maybe, you know, we've cleared pre-market highs, so Austin is looking to buy a little bit higher. Or he knows that, you know, if this breaks out of a consolidation period and starts to go a little bit higher and doesn't stuff, maybe he's going to look to go long on it. He is really good at identifying those types of situations. And he's also really good at teaching them in his webinars. So go definitely check out his webinars as well. He does have a lot of trade examples um, that I think are really good on the long side buying into strength. But for me, for my rules, I'm not really a strength buyer. I'm more of a weakness buyer. And so I never like to buy into a green tie candle. And I never like to buy into any type of strength. Um, I never buy overextended stocks. That's a given. If I see like maybe five, six, five or six massive green candles, or, you know, we're never going to get that in this market. Let's say two or three massive green candles. Um, I'm not going to look to buy there. Um, I'm always going to kind of look to buy into weakness, um, into some type of support, into some type of level or line that I really want to kind of go long into. Everything's always pre-planned that I do, um, you know, either pre-planned by I've drawn a line and I'm looking at it, or it's been pre-planned as if, okay, this is the line I want to go long on. If this holds, I am going to go long on it because there are no other lines left. Hey guys, my name is Toss Bradley. I'm one of the head mentors and moderators at My Investing Club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot. It is me directly on the other end of my business line, and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up. Um, you know, I don't buy broken stocks and I've tried to mention this in my video because we've had a couple broken stocks come back from the dead. And when a broken stock comes back, I think it's really important to note that um, usually Bao and Alex, um, they might have a plan on it, but um, you know, I'll even see it where like, okay, this could come back. Like there was a low float, a couple, um, you know, a couple weeks ago that was kind of broken and came back. Um, that one, they usually have in a liquid pre-market, um, and they're usually not at the low of the range if you want to kind of short it. Like the ones that I like to look at are stocks that have kind of been, um, you know, they don't really have a super liquid pre-market. They don't have a lot of bag holders. Um, they're at the bottom of the range and I like to see them start to kind of grind up and start to, you know, start doing massive volume. Most of the broken stocks that Bao and Alex are, are shorting, and I, again, I wouldn't really advise going along a broken stock, but, you know, if you, if maybe it's the only ticker on the day, or maybe it's a, a kind of stock that you're like, okay, it's starting to grind a little bit higher, but I don't want to, uh, you know, go long because Harry says don't go long broken stocks. Um, my kind of rule on it is that if we start doing a lot of volume and if we have like a lower float and some flow rotation and we start kind of grinding, that's kind of the area um, or kind of the, the type of action that I want to see rather than just looking at every broken stock saying, oh my God, this is an amazing long when it just keeps fading, right? You know, you need some level. You need some line to want to go long off of. And usually it's these broken stocks where we have nothing running on the day and then everyone starts to pile in. It starts to get crowded, short start to fight, and that's what brings it higher. But if we have another hot chick running on the day that's kind of like, another type of low float, another type of, you know, uh, stock that everyone's interested in, then I'm definitely going to avoid this broken stock. But the times that I have seen the broken ones run, it's usually when there's like, I'm going into the open saying, I think it's going to be a slow day. And then one of these kind of pick up and we get the action from there. Or it's kind of, you know, like these ones that have ran, it's hard to explain, but they're, they have kind of in a liquid pre-market. There aren't many bag holders in it anyway. And so, Usually the theory on the broken stocks is that there's so many people trapped that they just want to kind of sell into a pop, cut their position, and have it go lower. That's kind of the psychology. But in this, if we have none of those people and we start doing some massive volume, we start grinding higher, get the float rotation, start grinding, you see shorts fighting, we start to get kind of back up to VWAP, 
that's kind of the action where I'm like, okay, wow, this stock is actually strong. You know, we've just done like maybe four or five mil volume in the first like six minutes of the day. Okay, like this is something that I really want to look at now because everyone else is interested in it. But I'm not going to be looking at a dead broken stock saying, oh man, like this one's definitely going to the highs because that's just unrealistic. So I think like as a rule, if I was new and I was inconsistent, I'd just leave the broken stocks alone because like, you know, it is something that um, I think as I've gained experience, I've kind of said to myself, okay, maybe this has a chance if we can get a lot of volume. And then there's others where I'm like, okay, there's no way in hell because, you know, we've already done like six mil pre-market and this stock is now at the low of the range. Everyone's just going to be selling out or, you know, bag holding. So I think with experience, that's helped me on kind of the beaten down charts at the low of the range type of type of stocks. Um, never buy a stock that has very low volume during the day. Um, I've said it once, I'll say it again. Um, there's a difference, and I've talked about this in my video with kind of the lower volume squeezes, but if we're just doing maybe like half a million volume and we're getting to zombie time, I, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want along that. You know, if we're doing very low volume and we're just kind of fading, I wouldn't want along that, you know, because there's just no demand, right? So if we're doing very, very, very low volume, I'm not going to want to look at it. Never buy a stock because it's a low float. I see this all the time pre-market where people are like, oh, it has to run because it has a low float. And I saw it. I was the first one who saw it pre-market. It's like, no, buy a level, buy a line, you know, check the news, have a process on these. You can't just be hammering and hitting the buy button because it's a low float. Um, that just is not going to work. You know, you need to have a plan on it. Um, you, you know, don't, don't blow your load too early because it's a low float. Be patient, you know, let the stock come to your level, you know, you're going to have all day, right? So just be super, super patient and don't kind of hammer in right away. And number eight, always buy on a line. I know this is kind of um, self-explanatory, but as long traders, sometimes you can get caught up just as short traders can as well. When you start seeing, you know, a stock, you know, start running and you're like, oh my God, I missed it. I missed it. I missed it. You know, there's always going to be a pullback. There's always going to be some type of trade that, that is there for you. So, you know, just calm down, you know, start identifying some levels that you can go long off of. And that's really about it. I mean, just have a plan, be patient, be calm, wait for the stock to get to your level. Don't start hammering. And it's so easy to kind of see a stock creep up to VWAP that you weren't really watching. And it starts to break VWAP a little bit and you start hammering in. You're like, this is the one. This is the one that's going to squeeze. And we stuff VWAP, go lower. And you're the person who gets stopped out into my buy order, right? So just be super, super patient. The educated traders like this are always going to win. The chasers, the people without a plan are always going to lose guaranteed. So thanks for watching guys. I hope this can help you. Um, you know, I didn't go through a bunch of my trades. I kind of went through a small amount, but then I could have kind of a big thought process. And that's what I've kind of been getting from my DMs was like, you know, we understand you're a good trader, but we want to learn a little bit more on the why you kind of took this trade. So, you know, I think that that's great kind of feedback. And if anyone has any more feedback, you know, I love to hear it because I really do think that it is kind of important to kind of, you know, get to the point. Like if you think that me showing a large amount of trades, but little kind of, uh, you know, maybe, maybe a large amount of trades, but a little bit of process works for you, then maybe let me know. But what I have been getting from a lot of the calls and a lot of the, um, um, just kind of a lot of the DMs, the kind of one-on-ones is that, they would rather me show kind of like a pattern within my trades, why I took them, and then kind of go into some like teaching examples like that. So, you know, um, that's kind of what I said uh, I would do for this week. Definitely let me know what you think of it. And uh, yeah, have a, a great weekend. Rest your weekend and uh, good luck on Monday. Um, and if you're watching this kind of in the video library later, uh, you know, good luck. So, uh, see you guys and I'll see you for the next. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.